Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Tonight we're trying something a little different again. Uh, I tried to film my daily makeup routine. Um, I tried to film it up in my bathroom where I normally do my makeup um, and where I do my hair tutorials normally and I'm not really quite sure it worked out very well. Um, the lighting in there isn't really the best and I'm, again, I'm no beauty vlogger. I don't really know how to film makeup tutorials and makeup stuff in general, so we'll see. Uh, I think it's more just I guess showing how I do my makeup. It's not really a very good tutorial or anything like that. Obviously I need a different filming setup. Um, so I will work on trying to figure out how beauty people film things <laughs> for the next time just because I'd like to make more beauty videos and do like eyeshadow videos and looks and things like that. But clearly I think today Today's experiment taught me that I, I have a long way to go and a lot to learn, but hopefully this uh, is helpful for you guys who've been asking me to do like an updated makeup routine. Um, I, again, I just don't think of myself as very good at makeup. So here is a kind of get ready with me, or at least this is this is how I do my makeup. Um, I, I know I need to improve the setup here um, and I will get on that research for next time. Okay, so here we are, no makeup of course, and I'm just gonna tie my hair back out of the way, including my bangs, which I'll just clip out of our way here. I'm just going to wash my face real fast with a micellar wipe from Trader Joe's just because I'm getting ready kind of late in the day here and uh, I don't need to wash my face again, but I just want to wipe it down. And I am just going to tone my face with my Mario Badescu aloe vera toner here as well. And for those of you who uh, think that I have nice skin or tell me I have nice skin, this is what it looks like actually. Um, I do have acne prone skin and it's not that cute up close. I'm gonna go in here with my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I do conceal before foundation. I don't think that's the correct order, but uh, this is what works for me. I'm just going to blend that concealer out with my hands, with my fingers, and I just leave the under eyes for last and I do put some of that concealer onto my eyelid as well when doing that and just smooth and blend out that concealer as best I can with my fingers because again, I am not a pro. And the heater just popped on, so that's gonna be nice and loud for us. And then the, my foundation right now currently is still MAC. Unfortunately, it's the only cruelty-free, or not cruelty-free product that I still use. Um, unfortunately, MAC does sell in China, of course, so that is why they are not considered cruelty-free, but I do have many <laughs> bottles of this foundation left over from trying different shades over the years, so I've just been trying to use up all the rest of it, um, and I am still quite devoted to this foundation, unfortunately. It's the only makeup product I use that is not from a cruelty-free brand or not completely cruelty-free, um, and I'm just blending that out with a Real Techniques brush. I, it's the MAC Studio Fix Fluid, and it is super full coverage, which is, of course, why I like it, and mostly I like it because it lasts all day. Um, you can see I was just blending that out and buffing it out with that blending brush and then stippling kind of at the end to make sure there's no brush strokes. I'm going to set all of that with the RCMA No Color Powder, which is something I discovered because of YouTube and Kathleen Lights back in the day. And of course this huge container lasts forever, so I still have some. And I'm just patting and smoothing that on with a little, uh, really old Lancome brush here. Then I have this sad, sad looking elf brush that is a bit like a huge fan brush. And I'm gonna use this to do a tiny bit of contouring. I'm just using the Dolce de Leche Wet n Wild palette. Again, another ancient Kathleen Lines recommendation. I just get a little bit on that fan brush and then try and find my cheekbones underneath all, um, well, you know, uh, I'm sure they're there somewhere. And then I just go a little bit under the cheekbones up on the temple a tiny bit. And then whatever product is left on the brush, I just kind of tap underneath my jawline <laughs> to wishing that was a little more defined down there. You, you, you know what I mean. And then for blush, I use this NYX blush. I will have to find the color for you and put it on screen. And then an old Lancome brush again, and I just pat that on. I put this too high. I don't put my blush in the center of my cheeks. I put it up kind of on top of my cheekbone. I think this is rather an 80s placement, but I don't care. Um, I think that's what looks nicest on me. That's what I prefer. So that's where I put my blush. And then as for highlight, I have a Makeup Revolution highlight, baked highlight. Um, I think that's what, who makes this. Um, and then again, I do have a different Lancome brush here. It's just, again, a sort of angled shaped brush. And I just pat this highlighter or swipe this highlighter onto the top of my cheekbones and then on top of my nose a little bit and then my cupid's bow as well. And even a little bit on my forehead. Not that you see it under my bangs anymore. Then if I'm feeling really fancy, I will go into my Besame Violet uh, face powder and just do a final dusting of powder with this. I do find that it is quite brightening as it says it is. Um, that's what it's supposed to be for and I, I think it definitely gives a little bit more of a nice violet 
sheen on the end of your makeup. I don't know. Um, it's not supposed to be colored. It's supposed to be colorless, but it smells nice. It feels nice. And then I'm going to take off all of this extra makeup I've ended up with here on my eyebrows because again, I am no pro and I end up with makeup everywhere, um, especially since I have not good technique. Then I was trying to find a mirror, so I grabbed this Jacqueline Hill, Jacqueline Hill palette. Um, and then I'm just going to fill in the underside of my brows with an Anastasia brow pencil. Um, mostly I just fill in the underside here where I'm still trying to go them back in. And then I try and make the point at the top of the arch with the pencil as well. But I'm just filling that in with little strokes and having a really hard time doing this for the camera, to be honest. Here I am thinking, good God, this is hard to do on camera. Um, then I do fill in the rest of my brows with an e.l.f. eyebrow duo and a angled brush again from e.l.f. Um, this is just like a brow wax from them. I don't ever use the powder side of it. I just use the, this is the color dark, as you can see, because it's kind of too dark. Um, this is where I define in that arch and sort of fill in my brows a little bit more and draw them on, really. <laughs> um, and then I just sort of take the rest of that product and take it through the ends here. And I was having a really hard time figuring out how to do this with a tiny little mirror in my other hand and still get it on camera. I was, I gave up. Uh, I went and did the other brow off camera. The last step for my brows is I just take a uh, Anastasia brow pencil, the little spoolie on the end of that, and I just run that through my brows and use that to pull the color into the very front or like the nose-ish part of my brow. Um, you are supposed to leave this part lighter, I know, and so I usually just pull color through with my spoolie. This is a ColourPop eyeshadow in the color Truth. This is a Super Shock shadow from them, and I use this color as, this is my daily eyeshadow for sure. I just pop that all over the lid with my finger. It's just one of their Super Shock kind of moussey shadows. I just pop that all over. It's essentially the same color as my foundation, and here I am just wiping that off my finger. I do use two different eyeliners to achieve my cat eye. The first is a NYX liquid liner, and here again I'm struggling to figure out how to do this on camera um, with a handheld mirror. Um, but for my first eyeliner, I use a liquid eyeliner with a brush to do like the part that goes over my eye, I guess, like the curve over the main portion of my eye, and then I use a different eyeliner to do the wing, which of course I um, failed to get on camera, which we'll see here in a second. Um, but this is liquid eyeliner is how I draw the majority of my eyeliner on um, I just find it easier to use a brush for this part, and then I find it easier to use a foam tip applicator for the wings. And here I am realizing that it stopped recording when I did the wings, so very unfortunate. Um, for the wings, I use this Wet n Wild eyeliner. It used to be my main eyeliner back in the day. I just go up uh, following the line of my under eye and then connect it to that other eyeliner I did with the NYX liner, um, and then I just did pop on my Physician's Formula. Mascara as well, but of course the camera did not get any of that. And then I did use this NYX Wonder Pencil to uh, tight or like waterline my eye. Um, and then I'm going in here with Season 10 uh, Ultra Matte Lipstick from ColourPop, of course, like I was talking about recently. I love the ColourPop Liquid Matte Lipsticks. As you can see, this is a great shot. I'm just a total beauty vlogger, really made to do this kind of thing. Uh, basically, just uh, obviously my destiny. I, uh, I've been missing my calling all of this time with this kind of cinematography. Clearly, this is what I was meant to do. Uh, but here I am just painting on my lips and waiting for that to dry. Whew, here I am thinking, good God, this is a lot harder than it looks online. Getting my bangs back out again, and I will just rush through straightening my hair real fast here so you, the finishing thing of the getting ready with me my bangs are already um growing out quite a bit here so i need to get them trimmed already um i do of course like i said get makeup everywhere so here i am wiping off the makeup that got onto my baby hairs and hairline here and then i will just go ahead and straighten my hair i think we can all see that i could use a better setup for doing makeup videos in the future and we can all also see what i mean when i say that i'm no beauty expert i tend to try to just uh probably use too much base makeup and get it everywhere, including on my hair and my brows and all over the place. Um, I guess I like the end result. I like the way that my makeup turns out when I'm done, but I don't think the process is very pretty as we have learned here. Um, as you can see, also my hair is very stripy right now. I need to dye it again. I think I might go a little bit darker here in January, and I've even been considering an undercut, but shh, don't tell anyone. I know that's, speaking of unauthentic, ooh, yikes, but so here I am just straightening my hair as well, and you can see I need a bang trim, and I'm just getting frustrated with them here. So that was me applying this space of makeup. This is the my normal everyday makeup routine. No matter where I'm going or what I'm doing, I will use the same routine, use these same products, the same 
pro, uh, like process. Um, the only thing is I don't always wear my red lips. Sometimes I um, sometimes I'll wear them out and about, but usually when I'm going to my day job and stuff like that, I don't want to risk getting any red pigment on any of the clothes that I work with at work. So I um, don't usually wear my red lips to work. I'll just usually wear like a tinted chapstick or something like that. But if I'm going out and about, this is the, usually my face of makeup. Sometimes I will get creative and spend some time on my eyeshadow as you guys have been seeing lately, but normally it's just wearing one nude colored eyeshadow all over my lid, which is why I've been trying to have more fun lately because this isn't the most fun thing, even if it is a more classic retro mid-century, like late 50s look. Um, but this is my normal face of makeup. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Obviously, um, I will need to improve my beauty setup for next time. Uh, I'll do that research and I'll see you again soon. Bye.